All right. In my world, where I'm accustomed to seeing people with cognitive impairment, and I'm accustomed to seeing people who had trouble with math and recent memory and difficulty concentration and difficulty assimilating new knowledge and difficulty with word finding and confusion and disorientation and headaches, unusual neurologic events. How? Where's, where's it come from? We document it. It's there all the time. How's it come about? Well, I image brains with regular MRI, three Tesla coil, <coughs> and we'll see scarring or gliosis in about 45% of cases and about 5% of controls. That's a lot. But is there something specific about that scarring, about that gliosis, that says the injury of the brain is due to an inflammatory parameter? No. Is there a difference between Lyme and mold and all these other things? No. What's it mean? Well, there's some inflammation. And as the defense attorney is going to say, so what? So we figured out we'd beat him on that. And now we're going to do MR spectroscopy. We can actually measure chemicals in four areas of the brain. And we can look at N-acetyl aspartate, name doesn't matter, white matter, presence. Normal a lot, always the same. Case is equal to controls. We look at creatine, looking for cell mass. Same, cases controls. We look for myo-inositol, one of the big things that shows up in multiple sclerosis. Same in cases of controls, but even though this scarring, this gliosis, this demyelination is way present, and yet myo-inositol is still normal. The name doesn't matter. Then we look at choline, the main neurotransmitter difference in depressed patients, right? Cases controls, no different. We're not getting very far, and then we look at lactate. Lactate will rise, as we talked about earlier, when there's reduced delivery to oxygen, of oxygen to capillary beds, and less mitochondrial uptake of oxygen. So you break down glucose into two fragments, each three carbons, two pieces. One's called lactate, one's called pyruvate. Lactate accumulates if you've got reduced blood flow. If you fix the reduced blood flow, what will happen to lactate in the runner? What will happen to lactate in the basketball player in agonizing cramps? It goes away. But we can measure lactate in four areas of the brain and show marked discrepancy between cases and controls and lactate is telling us capillary hyperperfusion is a big deal. Then we look at a six parameter with MR spectroscopy and we say, how about the ratio of glutamate, an excitatory neurotransmitter, to glutamine, which is inhibitory? Well, that ratio should be way in the favor of glutamate, but it's reversed, and that GG ratio is suppressed in cases compared to controls. Okay, so something's going on in the brain. How does that tell me that I've got a mold patient or a Lyme patient or something else. There's no difference. 